Hello, my friends. This is Father Remy from St. Agatha and St. James Parish, which holds the Penn and Drexel Newman Centers in Philadelphia. We are going to finish now John chapter 6. We have been following this gospel, this chapter, for five weeks. It's a hiatus in the whole year which meditates on the Gospel of Mark. Because, but because it is too short, we contemplate for five weeks the John chapter 6, which is the discourse of the bread of life. Very important. Jesus is going to talk about the, the realism of the Eucharist. And it all began with the multiplication of the loaves. If you remember, such an important miracle. Why? Why is so, so important? Because you can find this miracle in all the four Gospels. It's the only miracle present in all the four Gospels. So God is trying to tell us something important through this miracle. Then Jesus announced, I am the bread of heaven. Because he told them, you are following me, you are seeking me because I did miracles, I healed you, I fed you that you should look for the bread that comes from heaven, the one that my Father will give you. So they said, okay, give that to us. And when they were asking, Jesus said, okay, I am the true bread that came down from heaven. What? Yes. And you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Unless you do this, you will not have life within you. I cannot abide and dwell in you, and you cannot dwell in me. If you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, they were shocked. Why are you using such a language, Jesus? We are your disciples. We are your friends. Why are you saying that? Blood is sacred. Blood is life in the, in the Jewish culture, in the Old Testament. If a woman was stained by blood, she was impure. How can you say that we have to drink your blood? That is, that is very delicate. And Jesus kept on highlighting and and lifting up the volume and the intensity of his language. He said, you have to gnaw my flesh, like animals gnawing. It is so harsh. Your language is so intense. So they are moved by God, by the gentleness of Jesus, by the love of Jesus, to a decision point. He challenges for a decision, each one of us. I remember there's a passage where the, con the Spanish con conquerors were arriving to... Um, to the coast of the Pacific coast, just before they got into Ecuador and to Peru, and the 13th of the island of El Gallo. And one of them, they are all afraid and scared because of the fears they are, they know they are coming in the, in the South America. So he makes, one of them makes, the captain makes up a line in the ground in the sand and says, okay, who wants to follow me now? Now that the things are dangerous, now that you can conquer everything or lose everything. Are you afraid or are you going to trust and follow me? So it's, Jesus is doing that with each one of us. And at the same time, it's one of the saddest moments in the life of Jesus because he can see in this moment, in this crucial moment, how his friends, his disciples, start leaving him. Not the twelve, but all the other, And many others were very close and very dear to the heart of Jesus. We have to know that. And he just knows them and loves them. And then one by one, they start leaving him. The vulnerability of the heart of God is exposed in that moment. I am in your hands. You're not a number for me. You're not something for me. You are, I love you, and you are leaving me. And then he turns to his inner circle, to his disciples, and he asks this question to them and to you and me. Are you also going to leave me? Are you also going to leave me? Why do you do that, Jesus? Why do you give me that choice? Why do you put me in that decision? Is that we can ask that to ourselves. We can ask, and Peter can ask that to Jesus. It's like they, are look, they look among each other. They gaze to each other. Peter, John, Thomas, are you going to leave? Are you staying? Peter, what about you, James? Are you staying or not? They're like, because why? Because Jesus wants us to accept his love freely to love him maturely he wants from us a free decision sometimes we will prefer a dictatorship we will to we will prefer to be enforced it is easy or it is easy just to be told what to do and to follow the crowds and to follow the majority what everybody's doing and to follow the social media blindly but jesus is saying no i want you to get into your heart to be in touch 
with yourself. If maybe in your Christian or Catholic community, people are leaving me, are being inconsistent, are not being coherent with themselves, I want you to go into your spirit and see me and be in touch with the depth of yourself. Are you going to follow me or you are also going to leave me? And then what we see, many leaving because many are stuck in the psychological human mindset, are locked in themselves, are not transcending the human mindset. But Peter goes deep and Peter answers in behind him, in behalf of all the others. And he says, you know, Jesus, to whom will we go? Only you have words of eternal life everlasting life only you have those words the power of your words although your words are shocking and difficult to accept your words are powerful that's one thing he's saying i have seen you say to the little girl talita kumi rise up and the girl was risen and i also saw you saying to lazarus lazarus come out and lazarus came out after three days of being dead so I believe that if you tell me that this is your body, that this bread is your body, I will believe you. And if you say your sins are forgiven, I, I believe that what you say affects a reality, changes reality, transforms things. That's why I will believe in the Eucharistic Christ. I will believe in the sacrament of reconciliation when you say through the priest, your sins are forgiven, that that truly happens. Not only that, but in the bottom of the heart of Peter, in the bottom of your heart and mine, there is something that is beautiful about Jesus. Not only the realism and the efficaciousness of his words, but being with him is beautiful. There is a splendor, there is a beauty that I cannot find anywhere else. The way you sought me, the way you called me, you know me by name, the way you are so humble, so meek, so respectful with my freedom, so noble, so friendly, trusting in me, forgiving me. You are beautiful. I will accept the Eucharistic Christ because I believe in the excessive love. I accept your crazy love for me. God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sunday.